time to check in with Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch for our weekly City Hall update. Uh, already hard at work, Mayor, with uh, a sign of the season, a water main break. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Joe. Yeah, we've had, a, we've had a few over the last month or so. Of course, today's is a major one up on Quincy Avenue. And uh, we've got uh, the National Grid's been doing a lot of work on that road, and we intend on replacing that that water main. I don't know if we're scheduled for next year, but of course, Murphy's Law. Um, <laughs> they got ahead of us. So, uh, I, you know, the repairs will be underway this morning and reassessment on when we can get in there to get the, the whole main replaced. Right, I'm told uh, Quincy Ave shut down from Scammel to Water, is that right? That sounds about right. Okay, yep. and part of Water Street affected as well, so uh, yeah, like I said, once the cold weather sets in, this is unfortunately what happens. Yeah, the ground starts to move, and when you have weaknesses, uh, this is what happens. Um, and it's a, it's a reminder that, I, you know, we, we've talked, oh gosh, hours and hours and with you over the years about infrastructure and we don't think about those things on the ground until something like this happens and it interferes with our use, whether it's water, whether it's sewer, whether it's gas. But uh, all that underground work that we've been doing over the last several years uh, is going to be so important going forward in the future. So we're, we're uh, you know, we're grateful for the workers. Uh, they they work hard in this kind of weather, and uh, sometimes they're not they don't get the the gratitude they deserve. You know. Um, we often talk about public service and so forth. Those those guys really work their tails off trying to find the leak, digging it up, replacing it in the hole, especially when you get into the colder weather. So we appreciate the work of the DPW crews. Absolutely. Yep. It's uh, not an easy task by any means. So we, we hope they can uh, speedy, uh, speedy up the process and get back inside and get warm for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and again, it's... it's Quincy Ave's the main thoroughfare, yeah. so there were, there are some disruptions. It's, I know it's piling up traffic this morning, but one of those unforeseen circumstances. Yeah, it's, it's changed the, uh, the the bus routes as well, so folks should be aware of that. The T has updates on uh, on their website. Folks should check that out. Yeah. Can we talk about a nice event uh, Saturday uh, for uh, Attorney Tom Kiley, Mayor? Yeah, boy, it was uh, really was a nice event. Tom Kiley is one of those special individuals. Uh, you know, we, we frequently talk about that, you know, what is it with Quincy and what comes out of Quincy for people and the contributions they make? And, and Tom was a uh, very accomplished, uh, has been a very accomplished attorney, but prior to that, he was an up Quincy High grad, free sport captain, uh, Harvard University. He was drafted in the uh, Vietnam War and went to Vietnam and got shot up uh, pretty badly and to this day has major disabilities regarding that, but never stopped him from pursuing his uh, dream of becoming a lawyer and he became a great one. Um, and, for, you know, the building that was named for him, it's a private building, but it's 48 units of housing, housing for veterans, particularly homeless veterans. And Tom, uh, I think that's a nice connection. I might have mentioned before, Joe, but he he defended the veterans preference in Massachusetts before the United States Supreme Court and won that case. So yeah. a lot of young men and women who served our country now serve as police and firefighters. Uh, police officers, firefighters, is because of that veteran's preference. So just an all-around great guy. Uh, he was instrumental in starting the High School Football Hall of Fame many years ago. Just just a quality guy. And a nice tribute and a beautiful building, too, um, that uh, graces that the corner of that intersection now. Yes, in, in fact, I would I would argue that before that work was done, that, that it may have been in the run for the ugliest building in <laughs> Quincy Center, if not Quincy. So the <laughs> Additions that were made, I think, really improved the architectural uh, view of that corner as well. I mean, you across from the Crane Library, across from the uh, First Parish Church, a couple of real architectural gems. Then you had that dog sitting there. So, <laughs> uh, my hats off to Leo Martin, the owner, uh, did a masterful job cleaning it up and making it look a whole lot better. Yeah, very nice. Can we talk a little bit, Mayor, about uh, a plan to? Uh provide a 100-year lease to the folks up at Quarry Hills. Quarry Hills Associates uh, was discussed during a public hearing last night. Lots of questions sure. uh, from the public, but what is the actual proposal? Well, it's it's um, it's different than the one initially because the initial lease had a lot of construction language in it. The construction obviously is, is all over. Uh, that golf course proposal went through, I mean, the ringer with DEP and EPA and um, 
all the regulatory agencies that are required. Uh, you know, the bureaucracies that touch that kind of a project. So uh, I remind people that, you know, that was a, it was literally a dump. The city had closed the landfill um, and capped it under the law, but the, you know, the land was barren and useless. The city was paying about $200,000 a year maintaining the leachate systems, the pumps, uh, to keep, you know, the any of that uh, water that would have been contaminated perhaps away from the groundwater, Furnace Brook, and those other areas. So uh, it was really an, a, a liability, if you will. Um, so when the Gulf Coast was built under Jim Sheets, um, you know, the city didn't pay one nickel for the construction of that, that facility. The big dig dirt was used. Milton's landfill was capped. It abutted Quincy's. It was capped with the material. And then our, uh, the entire site was lifted by several feet, uh, which then allowed for a golf course to be constructed on the top of it. Mindful also that it wasn't just about the golf course. There were four baseball fields and a very a large soccer field built as part of the program as well. Um, so it was, it was a really a, a great win for the city. Uh, I think we took in about 700000 this past year in revenue. So we get 10% of the gross revenue of the golf, and then we get 10% of the net on the uh, restaurants uh, side of things. So uh, as the golf course continues to do well, the city does well with it. And uh, so I think it's a it's an easy one. Um, you know, we just did a we, and I should say when I say we, the MBTA city was involved in the 99-year lease for the Bazudo project in North Quincy, uh, over the parking lot. This is uh, this is not an unusual thing to happen. Uh, there's a number of examples around the Commonwealth, uh, but you know this this will just lock it in. Make sure that um, you know there are assurances in there that they maintain the ball fields and uh, and so forth. But it's it's really a a great thing. We don't again we don't pay a dime up there, and, and we reap hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in revenue. We get uh, the fields that our kids get to play on. Uh, and it's a beautiful facility that helps put Quincy on the map in many ways. And I've certainly been been at many weddings at the clubhouse up there. It's a beautiful venue for events with the uh, vistas of the Boston skyline, the Blue Hills. Uh, it's a great spot. So I think it's a good deal for the city. I wouldn't put it forward otherwise uh, and certainly look forward to the council's discussion on it. One of the uh, one of the one of the issues brought up last night uh, during the hearing was the length of the lease. Uh, folks thought a hundred years was too long, and things would change during that time. And they were concerned that uh, they they may be looking to develop apartments, hotels uh, that would add to the con- congestion in that area. Well, you know that it, uh, if if there's a hotel that's built up at Quarry Hills, I think that'd be tremendous. Again, adds to the value. We are working, and I think. Uh, Mr. Walker, my chief of staff, uh, was to communicate that we are working with the Mass Dot, Mass Department of Transportation, to come up with a fix at the entrance of the bottom of the hill there, Rashuti Drive, in a bus where with the uh, ramp coming off the highway and, and coming into Willis Street. Uh, and that's the beauty of that location, it's right off the highway. Uh, so, for example, a hotel on that site, um, you know, my guess is if that happens someday, it'll be up off the highway up the hill and down the hill, back on the highway for people that would be visiting that hotel. So, you know, I don't know um, for sure what's coming development-wise, but um, I think a hotel would be a welcome addition uh, to that site, to that location. And, of course, with hotels, you get the hotel tax on top of things as well, which is which is a positive for the city. So, um, you know, I think it's a good deal, and uh, I hope the council sees the wisdom in it. Another concern was access to some walking trails. Is that part of the future plans, do you know? Well, it's, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk on walking trails way back when. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the DEP essentially had the final say in a lot of that. I think there are some paths that allow access to the Blue Hills, but some of the paths that was dreamed of originally, you would never allow um, on a golf course, you know, you don't be cutting through fairways and get hit in the head with a golf ball. So, mm-hmm you got to be practical along with the idea of it. I mean, Quincy's got a lot of open space areas, a lot of walking opportunities. I mean, a third of the Blue Hills is in Quincy. Um, so I think there's plenty of opportunities for people in that regard. So um, no, I, I think it's, uh, again, I think it's a good deal, and, and I think those things will continue to get fleshed out with, with the discussion with the council. Very good. Just uh, want to remind folks, too, this coming Friday, uh, 150th, anniversary celebration for the Quincy Historical Society at the Adams Academy. 
Yes, uh, 150th anniversary of the the, the building itself that okay. opened 150 years ago as a school for boys. And the money for that was provided in John Adams' will, which is also 200 years old. And uh, and the society's been there officially 50 years. So a lot of a lot of celebrating. And the Historical Society's having an open house, uh, I think it's 5 to 7 or 5 to 8, something like that, Joe. Uh, 4 to uh, 7. 4 to 7, yep. okay, I was close. <laughs> um, so people are welcome. There'll be a big tent out front. There's mm-hmm. no charge. People are welcome to stop in, check it out. Uh, but I would encourage people, Quincy people, to... Join the Historical Society. It's a very valuable nonprofit that you know keeps keeps track and history of the city. They got a lot of neat um, treasures over there. Uh, a lot of different items that I think people would enjoy. But it, it helps to preserve and tell the history, not only of the Adams and the Hancocks. We hear a lot about them, but the industry in our city, the changes, the demographics, the the various immigration um, groups that have come here. They they do a nice job and really telling the whole history. So. Yeah, I encourage people to stop over there and say hello and check it out. Yeah, I agree. It's a great spot. And uh, last time I was in there, they had a great presentation on Howard Johnson's. <laughs> Another Quincy. Yes, Howard Johnson's. Exactly. Dunkin' Donuts, Grossman's. They got all that history there. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty cool stuff, especially if you grew up around here and you recognize some names like that. Um, it all started right here in Quincy. That's right. Good to talk to you, Mayor. Appreciate your time as always. Thank you, Joe. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.